Strafft Jot Varshi, and welcome to our Let's Play of Europa Universalis 4. And I'm very excited to start this Let's Play, but also a little bit nervous. And I'll tell you why I'm nervous. Because while Paradox has an impeccable track record, is it impeccable or impeccable? I think it's impeccable. Anyway, an impeccable track record when it comes to grand strategy games. Sometimes getting out of the gate, uh, they're not the best. Um, Crusader Kings 2 was a notable exception. I, I think I think Crusader Kings 2 was great from the start, and it's only gotten greater. But uh, something like Hearts of Iron 3 was terrible at the start, but it apparently has become... It's gotten good. But uh, I just can never get over like the first instance when I played that game, and I've just never been a fan of, of Hearts of Iron 3. And uh, maybe that's because I came into Hearts of Iron 2 when it was just, you know at its peak of polish it had been out for several years at several expansion packs it was great and uh, over that time paradox really manages to polish their games to a to a sheen and i'm worried that something might ha happen here with europa universalis 4 where i play it and uh it's not as good as europa universalis 3 uh at the start and that leaves a bad taste in my mouth and i'm never ever to get able to get over that um, until, you know, even as time goes on and it becomes a really, really good game, like kind of Hearts of Iron 3 did, I just can't get over that hurdle. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's, uh, jump right into it. And we start in, uh, 1444, which I believe is about 50 years after, uh, Euro Europa Universalis 3 starts. I think it starts in 1399, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a while. But uh, the map does look very, very gorgeous. You can zoom down and you can see boats and towns and all kinds of nifty whozits and whatnots. And of course, we can sit here and adjust the time, which is one of my favorite, favorite things to do. I kind of just want to sit here and go through and 10 year intervals and just see how the world changes. And that's the end date. Quebec Wasteland. Um, which is 1820. Let's see what the world looks like in 1820. It's uh, quite something. Anyway, let's go back. Because we're not going to start at the end. We're going to start at the beginning. Now, the big question. Who are we going to start as? And who you're going to start as... It's, uh, it's a big undertaking. It's a lot of pressure. And deciding that is going to decide the entire pace of the rest of the Let's Play. It's going to decide, you know, especially in a grand strategy game like this, it's going to decide a lot. So, I posted up on my Facebook before we started doing this Let's Play. And uh, I mentioned that I was going to start doing a Crusader Kings 2, or not Crusader Kings 2, European Universalis 4 Let's Play. I got some of ideas of where we can start and people gave me uh, lots of great input like uh, I should start as the Knights of Malta which is actually not independent it's owned by Aragorn some people said, uh, said I should play as the t the Turamuds Turamuds but I think the suggestion that struck a chord with me the most was to go back to when I played as the Ottoman Empire in one of my Empire Total War Let's Plays and to relive the glory of the Ottoman Empire and that's the way I'm leaning right now I kind of would have preferred to play as maybe a more European nation but uh, You know what? To hell with it. We're playing as the Ottoman Empire. So let's just dive right in. Alright, so I'll come in here and say that I have had zero experience with the Europa Universalis 4. I've had plenty of experience with Europa Universalis 3, 
but um, I have no idea what new elements they've added into uh, Europa Universalis 4. So we're all going to learn together and see what we have here. So we have Country is at War with Albania. The Roman Ottoman Albanian War. Where revolts possible in some of our nations. I have a free advisor slot, so let's put in our advisors for government. There you go. Actually, maybe we should not just put these guys in willy-nilly. Because <laughs> they cost us money. And I'm losing money, it seems. So let's hold off on filling those advisor slots. Truce will expire with several different nations. National decisions are available. Achieve religious unity. Um, form an alliance with uh, Dual Qadir. A city of world's desire. Okay, I think these are missions. Oh, yes, these are missions which we need to achieve. Oh, we get to select one. I'm going to do achieve a city of the world's desire, which is going to be take Byzantium. Now some national decisions. Adopt the Divishmir system. By enrolling young men from newly conquered lands into service, we could increase the efficiency of our recruit process considerably. Okay. We could also denouncement of sect practices, which condemn any forms of sect practices and declare all practitioners heretics. And that seems to that'll help us. So stability and expansion. This is something new. Oh wait, well, we'll go over these slots a little bit. Let's, let's finish looking at our uh, various tabs up here. Dispute of succession in uh, some nearby areas, which gives us uh, a chance to potentially uh, ruffle some feathers there and take the area for ourselves. I have claims of provinces I do not own. And I can hire a free military leader. Okay. It says I can hire a free one. Though. There we go. Okay. So up top we have money, manpower, stability, prestige, and legitimacy. And I'm going to assume that Prestige is uh, similar. God, it's been so long since I played Univer Europe Universalis 3. But I'm pretty sure... I can't remember if Prestige was an aspect of that game. Or if it's been an aspect in like all the other games. Such as uh, Crusader Kings 2. But basically, we'll just re we can read the description here. Because it could probably explain it better than I can. It affects many things, but primarily... How likely other nations are to accept our proposals. How likely it is our royal marriages will result in personal unions. Legitimacy, this is how legitimate our monarch is. We're here, we have merchants available, colonists. Uh, these are aspects from Europe Universalis 3, which are our various agents which can help us do various tasks that we can uh, employ to our will. So. Let's open up the main task we have here. Production interface, ooh, what's this? Oh, this is where we can build uh, our various units. But uh, let's start here. Government, despotic monarchy, which decreases national revolt uh, risk and unjustified demands, native 10. Our primary, primary culture is Turkish and secondary culture is Greek. We have some various modifiers here. Jinza, which is a national tax. Something that I'm not even going to try and pronounce. Shihiluk Ula Islam, which uh, 
increase our missionary strength, denouncement of sect packs. And we can see our various power, our administrative power, diplomatic power, military power. Um, these, I think, are new aspects to Europa Universalis IV. And uh, I assume we're all going to find out together what it is that they do. I'm assuming they govern uh, probably administrative things such as taxes, our diplomatic prowess, and military might. Anyway, moving on to diplomacy. Apparently, diplomacy has been very much so revamped in this game. Man, I really wish like I'd, I'd done a little bit more research on this game before we started. But sometimes it's all good. It's good for us all to learn together, and we can obviously declare war, alliance auctions. That's interesting. We can form coalitions against, influence their actions, uh, relations actions. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. It's got a drop-down menu. Yes, we can form an alliance. Influence. Enforce peace. Proclaim guarantee. Relations. Approve relations. Send a warning. Send an insult. Dynastic actions. Offer vassalization. Royal marriage. Convert. Economic. Issue embargo. Send gift. Own. Oh, actions. Ask for military access. And all that good stuff. Economic. Sliders. So here... We get all our economic information. We see how much money we're making. We see how much money we're losing. We're losing a lot to advisors, which is... Um, I'm gonna kick you. Okay, we cannot fire him until later. Until a month later. Anyway, let's go back. So that's why we're losing money. We're also losing money due to army maintenance and fleet maintenance. And all those good things. But if we needed to, we could raise war taxes. Current war exhaustion, which is how people, how much people are upset during the war. Inflation. And all these amplifiers will become known to us as we continue to play the game. Trade. Um, this Apparently trade has also been much so revamped. So you can definitely... Definitely take a little while to figure out how exactly uh, trade works. Our trade efficiency can never be higher than 200. It's modified by technology. Trade efficiency is how efficient your nation is at trading. It first impacts the power of your mer the power your merchants can wield in a trade node by acting as a direct increase in percent. Secondly, it is the basis for how much income you can get out of your merchants. Trade range. This is how much obviously we can how wide our trading sphere is. This is how uh, trade steering this is how efficient your merchants are when they try and steer the flow of trade in their way. Trade income, uh, merchantilism, and uh, that's 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 what we got for trade. Oh, we can westernize. Woohoo! Well, not yet, but uh, it's possible in the future. Anyway, we are currently trying to... Looks like uh, technology is based into three areas. Administrative, diplomatic, and military. And then we can kind of... Looks like as time goes on, those get researched and kind of on their own. I don't know how much direct influence we're going to have with our technology research. It seems like it might be just something that kind of happens on its own, but again, we will we will learn as time goes on. So, Also, I welcome any kind of information that anybody might want to give me about uh, ideas for this game, because even though I played a shit ton of Europa Universalis 3, some of these uh, concepts are going to be new to me. So we can, oh, our various national ideas. This is also something that carries over. And these sort of like, you know, ideas amassed in, in, in the consciousness of our civilization influence it in certain ways. It looks like these are the ideas that we have already. Autumn intolerance. Law Code of Suleiman. 
Resistance and Decisions we already looked at. Stability and Expansion. Oh, this is when it comes to colonization. Interesting. Overextension is, uh, I think, a new aspect. Stability. Your national stability reflects your revolt risk. Uh-oh. Bulgarian nationalists may break out. Show different means to handle the... Oh, I can actually negotiate with the rebels directly. That is interesting. They want Bulgaria to become a free nation. Well, they can eat a dick. And uh, overextension, like I said, is something new. Our nation is currently not overextended. There are no current effects. We gain overextensions by owning provinces that are not our cores. Colonies of your primary culture are exempt from causing overextension. If we have uh, over 100% overextension, we may be getting some nasty rebels regularly, with appearing in a higher frequency than they usually do. So let's move on to religion. Tolerance of the true faith. Increased chance of a new heir. Current piety, 5%. We are not the defender of the Islamic faith, but we can send missions to nearby uh, cities. Send a missionary to some of the cities that we own. Oh, we don't have any missionaries to send. And hopefully convert them to our glorious religion of Islam. Military, our current unit, which we can... Uh, as time goes on, we'll research better military technology and get new and more refined uh, military units. And, uh, our naval military, land tradition, our, sorry, army tradition, is the accumulated army experience that your nation has. Tradition is increased by ideas, buildings, and land combat and sieging. Naval tradition. So that's kind of cool. Like, essentially what they're saying is that over time, your civilization builds up certain traditions and, and warlike feelings. So you can say that countries like, I guess, like Germany and, uh, you know, have a very uh, strong war tradition. And it could be a country like, because they've had lots of wars throughout their, their history. And England has a strong naval tradition, being an island nation and always having strong navies. And same with Spain. So that's interesting. And uh, this shows us our tactics and discipline and all that good stuff. So, there's some hints. I guess they will help us. Tell me more about... I don't know. Okay. So those are our main modifiers and here we get some information about our navies and armies and what status they're in so our powers uh, listed up there let's look at our various provinces when we select them like how much can we alter them so we can look at the I see. We can become like a multicultural empire and accept, be accepting of all their cultures. We're not accepting of the Bulgarian culture, nor are we accepted of the Orthodox religion. So that kind of sucks for them. So we can recruit and hire mercenaries here. I see. Nice. So there's a lot of information here. Some of it, I am not entirely sure what it is. Is there in regards to trade centers? Currently, the trade center for this area is Constantinople. Ooh, the province history. Cool. And it shows us some... Construct a manufactory. Oh, I see. Well, we don't have any kind of... We don't have the money to do anything like that. Alright! Holy Roman Empire. Oh, yeah, this is... Something that we don't have much influence in, but could potentially affect us down the road. Um, just hold on one second. Alright, anyway. So, go to political map mode. 
So let's uh, kick the crap. Out of these. Athens has entered a military alliance with our enemies. So let's definitely send in our troops to go and innovations um, so it tells us how the siege is going The slaughter of the Albanian army is now complete. Well, soon to be complete. So, when it comes to recruiting units... We'll go to our production. Okay, cool. I see how that works. Nifty. Oh yeah, let's uh, fire our advisor because he's costing us too much money. Bye bye. So that was a miscalculation, but you live, you learn. All right, you go there, missionary, and you spread Sunniism to these guys. Don't, don't let them tell you it can't be done, because it can. Time a siege phase happens, a die 1 to 14 is rolled. And that roll is added together with siege modifiers. Let's see. Okay. We should, probably shouldn't assault because we'll lose. Considering we don't have any cannons in this army. I thought we were at war with Athens. Oh no, I guess not. No, there's no reason for me to have crewed these units. At least I get the money back. I'll send the navy back as well. So the map is gorgeous. That is for damn sure. units are definitely much better looking and I like how they kind of slide about you know no, I gotta... could I could I declare war on them if I wanted to I have no cause to spell No, I can't. Besides being a jerk. But I know I have a uh, cause to spell against these... Byzantian dicks. So I'm certainly going to exercise that once... Albania falls to my might. Technology. 
There's not much I can do. I think I can... Ah, I see. So it's power generated that looks like it has an effect on technology. So, I guess learning how to generate that power, said power, is going to be a uh, key to advancing our technological ambitions, if you will. Man alive. F this. Have these Ottoman hordes for a reason. Let's use them. Assault! I move one of them out of the range so they don't. Ooh, that's cool. You can have them do, uh, certain, you can have your armies do certain which is scorched earth, burn colony, seize colony, massacre natives. Man, they certainly regain their morale quite fast. have our general lead this glorious Ottoman Empire to victory once the morale is regained. The walls are breached. Alright, well we better get in there then. Defenders are deserting. Alright, let's do this. All right, the siege of Albania is over. Uh, how do we boss? boss? My Sultan, we have won. The siege of Albania lasted 375 days before the garrison finally succumbed to hunger and disease. The Ottomans now control the province. Well, wait, what? will allow me to offer a peace deal. We demand full annexation. Send demand. I'm glad they've accepted my generous offer of annexation. The Ottoman Empire marches on. Okay, good. This is considered a core province. Yes, it is. It's considered a core province by many. 